going to explain the origins of how I got to making these cakes for you today. You ready? Buckle up. It's your girl, Polly Cooks, Paulette, whatever, you know, you get the deal. Cheers to day drinking. It's not a hickey, it's a curling iron burn. Just gonna point that out, there we go. All right, so this is the story of how I got to making these cakes that say such provocative things. I was born in California, raised in Utah. No, I'm not a Mormon. It gets even better. My mom raised us pretty much against our will, Jehovah Witness. Jehovah Witness is no Easter, no holidays, no Christmas, no birthdays, no fun. Your girl did not care to be a Jehovah Witness at all. Uh, the whole no birthday thing really bothered me. And when I was eight years old, I asked one of the church elders, the equivalent of a clergyman, why we couldn't have birthdays. His answer was sad to say the least. His answer, can you imagine telling this to an eight year old little girl? He told me that uh, a mom and a daughter uh, got pissed at John the Baptist and wanted his head on a platter for the daughter's birthday and they got it. My guy, I most definitely never wanted, nor would I ever want anyone's head on a platter for my birthday. Just want some cake and some balloons, maybe a gift or two. Am I asking for the stars here? No, no I am not. Drink break. Can you imagine that dramatic response? No little girl, we don't have birthdays. Somebody wanted a head on a platter long before your time, but you're gonna pay for it now. Another fun layer of how I got my sense of humor. My mom was a single mom. We grew up on welfare. She was a paranoid schizophrenic and a hoarder. Good times. My mom would hoard everything, including food, and we were not allowed to just help ourselves into anything into the kitchen. We had to ask permission for everything we wanted to eat. So my food issues began at a very young age. Took a while to fix. Still working on it. So when I was about 10 or 11 years old, I had foraged enough ingredients in my mom's kitchen to make a loaf of bread. And with that loaf of bread, I made French toast for me and my sisters. And I fell madly in love with cooking. You could produce something and show your love with ingredients in your kitchen. This is, this is everything for me. My mom's household was a very turbulent household. She was very physically and verbally abusive. This is not a pity party. Today, it's a gin and tonic party. No issues here. <laughs> I wouldn't change a thing because it's got me to where I am today and it's a pretty good life that I have. Right after I turned 16 years old, my mom threw me out. I wasn't really scared though, I was more relieved. I ended up moving in with some friends and one of those friends I call him my OG, my original gay. He and I became instant best best friends. We in fact, we even told people that we were cousins. We were together all of the time. I had dropped out of high school. I was working two full-time jobs and living in this apartment with my friends. After about a year, they all wanted to move back home with their families, which was not an option for me. OG, my original gay, asked his parents if I could move in with them while I finished high school. We agreed that I would pay them a little bit of rent. So I'd like rent a room from them, but they treated me like family from day one. They didn't even my last name when I moved in with them. And their entire extended family treated me as one of their own. So I lived with them for about three years uh, and had a great time. I went from literally living on one can of soup per day to a regular dinner every single night. It was, it was so loving and caring and they gave me a curfew and I loved it. I, it felt so good to be so taken care of. Shortly after I moved in with Ben and Linda, uh, David's parents, Linda had made me my very first birthday cake. I lost my mind. Not only was it beautiful, but it was delicious and she made it herself. She does everything with perfection and she got me into my love of cakes. It was so much fun. Uh, it was known throughout the extended family. She made everybody's cakes and she's where I learned how to make cakes. And then I was making cakes for anyone, any reason, any time. I just, I just wanted to learn everything about it, all the techniques, everything. So I was back in high school and I, my love of cakes just immediately exploded and bloomed. And one of my first cakes was actually for my biology high school class. And I made a model of a plant cell out of cake and candy. Everybody was happy, just like I am right now. After I graduated high school, I had planned on moving to the East Coast to Nanny to save my money to go to the French Culinary Institute. 
But before I left, Ben and Linda had sat me down and said, we need to talk. And they said, we could never take your money. All the money I had actually been paying them in rent, they put into a savings account and gave back to me. These people are angels on this earth. I love them to this day. They are my family. I call them my pseudo parents. If you know me, you've either met or heard of my pseudo parents. So I lived in New Jersey as a live-in nanny and all along the way making cakes. While I was a nanny in New Jersey, I met some South African nannies. And one night when we were getting high, they said, hey, Paulette, if you like uh, smoking weed so much, you should come to South Africa. We've got a lot of it there. Cut to me buying an open-ended ticket and getting my ass down to South Africa as quick as possible. <laughs> so I got back to America in one piece, believe it or not. And I went to the French Culinary Institute here in New York City. And then I worked at the very famous Le Cirque restaurant. And from there, I interned with Colette Peters, a very famous cake artist. And then came Instagram. Tell me not to do something and I'm gonna do it 10 times and take a picture. Growing up with a single mom on welfare in Utah, I uh, could not afford a lot to say the least. There was a really famous bakery. It was a famously Mormon run and owned bakery. And I'd always wanted to get a cake from them, but I could never afford it. So fast forward, uh, I was living in New York and I would go back to Utah uh, during the summer for my birthdays. And I uh, called this bakery uh, and ordered a birthday cake for myself because I can do that now. I'm a grown up. When they asked what I wanted written on the cake, now these cakes, they're known to be just absolutely beautiful floral cakes. Like we, no one had seen cakes like this yet. So this was amazing. So when I ordered my cake, I was asked, what do you want written on the cake? I said, slut. Got real quiet, real quick. I go to pick up the cake and I'm like, hi, I'm here to pick up the cake for Paulette Goto. Literally, this is what I got. Oh, that one. Goes, brings the cake out to show me and lifts up the box and it said, sluts. And I said, oh, oh wait, little mistake. Uh, there's just one slut me so can you take that s off for just this slut thanks and that was kind of it in ordering a cake that said slut from a very conservative mormon run bakery uh, that kind of began my idea of writing something provocative on these pretty cakes i uh, and to this day i love it i crave it i do make cake every single day and uh, i just like pushing the envelope i'm known to like to push the envelope Push it real good. I love the juxtaposition of something provocative written on a beautiful, delicious, yummy, floral decorated cake. There's just nothing better than that to me. Okay, there's a few things better, but this fills a lot of my time. All along the way, I knew that I wanted to do something with cakes, but I didn't want to do what everyone else was doing. I didn't want to copy anybody. I wanted to really do my own thing. And it really mostly developed during the pandemic. You know, we had a lot of downtime then. Tell me not to do something with no real good reason for me not to do it. I'm gonna do it probably about 10,000 times.